It is a power grid that failed us in February, and now there are fears it could happen again. We're talking about the Texas power grid, and our guest for KSAT Q&A today is State House Representative Diego Bernal, former city councilman for San Antonio. Diego, thank you for joining us. You know, I am struck by the fact that Texas, great state, big state, energy producing state, has such a seemingly fragile power grid system that it, when it gets bitterly cold, it goes down. And now, you know, on days where it's not even triple digits, we're told to conserve. How can Texas be like this, but you have states like Arizona and Nevada and even New Mexico that deal right. with same extreme temperatures, but don't seem to have a seemingly fragile power grid like we do? Well, I think there are two answers to that. Um, the first is that Texas is not part of the national grid. So those other states are part of a national grid, so they all rely on each other. They've got some sort of insurance by being interconnected. And we're not. We're on our own completely. And the truth is that now the national power grid won't have us because we would have to spend a lot of money to get up to their standards. And if we didn't, we would actually bring them down. So it's not so much that we need them as much as they don't want us. Um, the other part of the answer is that I think what you're seeing now with the conservation, even though we haven't hit 100 and we're only in June, is that these are leftover wounds from what we experienced in uh, the winter storm. It's sort of a wound that hasn't healed yet. And you're, what you're seeing is a sort of fragile nature of the grid now. They're still doing repairs left over from them. And some things didn't really get repaired properly or were sort of repaired, but not completely and now it's coming back to bite us. So we, we've got a ways to go. And so some of that, it, it seems this issue with conservation that ERCOT is requesting right now, it's that twofold issue of yes, it is hot outside, but also what they're calling forced generation outages. Is that what you're talking about in terms of repairs, uh, things having to be taken offline right now to deal with what happened several months ago? That's right, that's right. So the, the failures from the winter storm and the mechanical failures um, the, the parts of the factories and the generations that broke, you can't repair those that quickly. These are giant pieces of, mach of, of machinery. These are very advanced pieces of technology. It's not a plug and play sort of situation. You've, you've got to spend a lot of time and money to fix it. And even if we've fixed it to the point where we can operate, when you've got so soon afterwards, a, a, a not a record high, but you know, a hot temperature, what you're seeing is it's still fragile. We're still not all the way there. We're not all the way repaired, much less prepared for another winter storm or extreme heat. We're still in the process. And so the, the hot weather caught us when we're not all the way back. And, um, you know, what's concerning is that, again, it's only June. We haven't hit triple digits. And normally in San Antonio, every summer we have at least 30, 35 days over 100. So um, we've got a lot of work to do. We're talking about more than weatherization here, though, right? When you're talking about the fact that there are certain standards that the national grid is on, that Texas doesn't come up to par with right now. Is there an appetite at all in Austin to improve the power grid when it comes to the state legislature? Yeah, in all fairness, the legislature did pass uh, some legislation that was designed to update to some degree to weatherize and prepare the grid and the generators for events like the winter storm and very hot events. But the problem is that they don't have a lot of teeth. Um, there's not, there's, it's sort of like a strong suggestion, but they sort of left it up to the PUC, the, the body that got into a lot of trouble during the winter storm. They left it up to them to set the standards, to do enforcement and to decide whether or not the industry has met the standards. This is on top of the fact that even for private power companies, the state, the public is going to foot the bill for a lot of those improvements. So there's sort of a will to do it, but there's not enforcement. And I'm hoping that this hot weather will force them to do it. I'm not saying they're going to do nothing, but I, I left very unsatisfied with the efforts, honestly. So some of the standards that you're talking about that the rest of the country operates under are some of the same regulations that Texas lawmakers years ago wanted to avoid by keeping our power grid separate uh, from the rest of the nation. And I have to say there's a, a long, long history that goes into that. And we have an episode of KSAT Explains on our website right now that really breaks that down if you want more information. So 
What do you think the answer here is? Because certainly the February winter storm confronted the entire state lawmakers with the fact that more needs to be done uh, to keep the lights on, to keep the heat on. So if you're saying that what was passed in Austin this past session does not have teeth, what's the what are the teeth that we need uh, to get us in good shape? I, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer that when it comes to health and public health, uh, and in this case, we're talking about the way that human beings respond to extreme cold and, and extreme heat, that you don't gamble, that you do what's necessary. It might be more expensive. It might make people who are normally your friends um, in the oil and gas industry upset with you, but you do it to make sure that people are safe. So you don't give them a way out. You don't negotiate. You don't say, if you want to, you say, you have to. Um, the state has the ability to do that, um, and we haven't used it. And so that, that's what I would do. I would I would make what is somewhat optional, not an option, put them on a timetable. I think you can use some public money. I think if they're private companies, they should pay for some of that themselves. Um, and then you just make them do it. We do it with everything else. So for example, if you're building a giant building, if you're building a skyscraper in San Antonio, you have to install uh, the sprinklers to avoid fire, to put out fire. It's, it's required. You don't make the state pay for sprinklers you just do it and we're very unforgiving about that we say you have to do this if you want to build here i think that we we provide the teeth we provide the enforcement mechanism and we just go we stop negotiating we stop playing nice oil and gas are not our enemy um and they and they have a very important role in the state but at the same time the well-being and the health of the people that we're responsible for ourselves and our neighbors um, has to come first Quick question, yes or no? Do you think there's a chance that uh, the power grid will come up in a special session? No, um, I, I don't. I, I, I hate to say that, but cynically, politically, if it did, after the legislation that already passed, because they did pass some and there, there are some reforms that are coming, I just don't think they're enough. But if it were to come, come up again in a special session, it'd be an admission of defeat or mistake. Mm -hmm. by leadership and I just don't see them having the humility to do that and that's just me being as honest with you as I can. We're waiting to see what details may come about this potential special session. State Representative Diego Bernal, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.